Hey you guys, I have a word to share with you guys. Um, and I want to go ahead, I'm gonna pray really quick and then get right into the scripture that I opened up to and then just share with you guys. So Father God, we thank you for this moment. We thank you, Father God, that you're speaking so clearly to us. And I pray that this word comes as divine revelation and a blessing to our spirits that we put on the fruits of your Holy Spirit in this hour. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So I'm going to read Ephesians chapter 4, starting at verse 14. And it says, actually, I'm going to start at 9. It says, what does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is Christ. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does his work. So in a different version, if I was reading, I believe this is, this is my old Bible. I believe this is the NAV version. It's so old, I can't even tell what the translation is on the side. But um, if we're reading in a different translation, it's the same way. Um, uh, don't let your faith be tossed to and fro. Don't be faithful in one moment and the next minute just toss it away. And by hearing what you want to hear. And the whole point of walking in faith towards the Lord and in God it is to build us up, right? Because God is so complete. Christ himself is perfect. He's complete. Um, and so we have the opportunity, we have the chance to grow, to be built up in truth, in love, in faith, in God's faithfulness, to continue to do the works of service he's called us to do. If I go ahead and keep reading, um, it says, so I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do and the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity and they are full of greed. That, however, is not the way of life you learned um, when you heard about Christ and you were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus, you were taught with regard to your formal way of life to put off your, your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires to be made new in the attitude of your mind and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. And faith in God, and we know that faith comes by hearing the word of God, the word is God, and we know by hearing the word of God that it transitions us, it transforms us, it resonates with our spirits because it is the spirit of God that dwells within us. And so I want to go back to talking about faith. You have to have faith in the Lord. You either have faith in things outside of God, like back in my backslidden days, I had faith in so many things. I had faith and maybe faith isn't the term and the word. But if you really dig down deep and think about it, to have faith in something means to give your all to something. And so when you have faith in God and you have faith in God's promises and God's truth and God's love and God's grace and who he is, God moves and God allows a way into your life for you to just grow. And the more you seek God, the more God rewards you. That is an actual scripture. It says, seek the Lord diligently and he will reward you. So I want to share about your faith. Has your faith been a little bit wavering? Has your faith been on the fence lately? Has your faith been tested? Has your faith been 
you know, have you been struggling with your faith? All these questions do not condemn a person. They're honest and they're truthful. And we can go before God and say, God, I need you to help me with my faith. I need you to help me with my belief because, you know, the enemy will come in, but also it is our diligence to resist the enemy. It is our goal is to resist the enemy, resist the devil, and he will flee. And so in a lot of ways, just like we read in scripture, it is to spiritually mature us, right? It is to not only tap into the Lord and get close to God, but it is also to keep our faith in God. Faith in this life is so important because if we don't have faith in God, we're believing in something else. And that is detrimental to our spirit, to where we're headed. So I want to share with you today, if your faith is being tried and tested, just know that we do go through circumstances. We walk through valleys. God says, you're going to endure to the very end where it, we're not going to live this life without um, going through hurdles and going through opposition. When these things are presented in our lives for, for whatever reason, we know who we can call on. And God has already made us more than conquerors. He's already made us strengthen in him. We have his strength and we can ask for his strength that when our faith is being tested, when we are being tried, when we are um, being persecuted, when we're being mocked, when we're being watched, when we are on the fence of something, God is who we call in times of need. I love this scripture, this, this verse, which I'm going to go back to. It, and it says, what does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? Talking about Christ here. He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. Y'all, that is powerful in itself. So the next time your faith is being tried and tested, ask the Lord. Ask God, God, I need you. I need you to increase my faith. I need you to come into my heart, into my life. And I need you to show up in a way that I haven't seen before because God will do as you ask. He does it way better. He does it abundantly and exceedingly over what we even ask. Um, and so that if, if maybe you're in a season right now, maybe you're in, you're in this moment where you're on the fence with your faith, just know that God already knows your heart. And oftentimes God's just waiting for us to open our mouths and to ask him and to have him come in and show up in such a way that we have not seen before. So don't let your faith be tossed to and fro, right? He says it here, going to verse 14, then we will no longer be like infants, right? Infants need direction. They need help. They need support. They need nurture because they're infants. They don't know any better. They're being taught. And so he says, these infants are tossed back and forth by the waves because they don't know any better and, and their innocence, but they don't know any better. And as we are spiritually maturing, as you grow in your faith, don't just stop because things don't feel the way you want them. You keep going because you got to go past the pressure. You have to walk past the pressure, right? When you're walking through the fire, it may not feel good in the moment, but you're being refined and you're going to always walk out without any smoke on you. God says he wants a bride without spots, blemish, or wrinkles. You got to go through the fire. You got to be refined. You have to be pruned. Yes, you're going to be tested. Yes, you're going to go through things that seem uncomfortable, but it's for your own good. And God is always with us. God will never leave us. And God will never allow us to go through something if he's not in it. God's always with us. And he doesn't give us more, any more than what we couldn't handle. God gives us what we can handle. Remind, reminder, if you're going to take away anything today, reminder that you are already more than a conqueror. So the situation, the circumstance, whatever you're seeing right now in your current position, you're more than that. You're more that God has called you to rise up. God has called you to, to be seated in heavenly realms. If you're in a, in a position where maybe you don't know the next move, you're just trusting God. That's where God has you. That's where God wants you. And God honors that. So I leave you guys with the scripture. I don't know exactly where it's at. I'm going to link it below. Um, but it talks about what you pray in secret with our Heavenly Father. He rewards publicly. So no, not everything needs to be shared. And this is something I'm learning as well. Not everything needs to be shared. You can share as the Holy Spirit leads you. Then there's certain things that you can rejoice with others in. But God 
wants to lead us. God wants to, he wants to be the biggest part of our lives, not the only part of our lives because then everything else is added. Everything else would then make sense. So I pray this word blesses y'all and I will talk to you guys soon. God bless you.